Dr. Henderson has grace, graciously said he will stick around for another five minutes. If you have not gotten your skin checks, come see Dr. Henderson down by the stage. If you do not have your skin check done, if you do not have your mark done, you will not wrestle. Skin checks, final, final, final call.
that's it. Skin checks are over. Skin checks are over. Oh, got a minute.
Okay, folks. To start us off with our national anthem, please rise, remove all headgear, face the flag for our national anthem sung by Ellie Rosen. Once again, the matchups are on the board. On the mat to start us off. Mat one, Hume Forcroft. Conansville, Faker. On deck, Mat one, Weddle, Standing Rock, Smith, Mile City. In the hole, Mat one, Smith, Harding County, Ward, McLaughlin. Starting to on mat two. Thurman, Sturgis, Hopelman, Watford City. On deck mat two, Baldwin, Sturgis, Zoller, Spearfish. In the hole mat two, Bombeck, Kildeer, Redman, Bowman. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, coaches, wrestlers, parents, fans, if I do make mess up a last name or something like that, please just come up and report it to me. It's not intentional. I'll do my best to correct that. I am only what my parents made me. All right. Good luck to all the wrestlers. Let's go. Just like every other year, folks, we are going to ask you to try to keep that entrance way clear. And if you are around the mat, Kneel down, sit, so that the fans can see.
In the hole, Matt one, Dabrowski, Sturgis, Fallon, Miles City. In the hole, map one. Cuttrell, Moorcroft, Dobb, Bowman.
Coaches, we do have the brackets up at the head table. We have the brackets up at the head table.
Green.
Maccabin. Is that Maccabin? I know you're going to say that. Maccabin. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the Robert Drinky Auditorium for the 2023 Hedinger Classic as we get ready for wrestling action. Going to jump right into it right away with Riley Hasbrook. Hasbrook's going to come in. He's going to shoot a takedown right on the inside cradle, and he's going to have Cooper McBadden from Faith right to his back. So a great shot by Hasbrook. He's been the first wrestler so far for the Nighthawks, starting off at 113 pounds. And there's the fall. So Hasbrook. Nice little shot inside cradle, put the head in the ribs, turned him over and picks up a pin at 113 over Maccabin from Faith. Yeah, 21 second pin for Hasbrook as we just uh, got into action. The Nidox have nobody at 106. Uh, we do have Riley Hasbrook at 113. He'll pick up the uh, first win. And once again, how the Classic has always been run for the last 15 years or so, however it's been run, they go into five rounds of two play, and then get into the consolation and the championship semifinals tomorrow morning, late morning, and then wrestle for uh, first, second, third, fourth, and I believe fifth and sixth. Yeah, the nice thing about the round robin format is uh, everybody wrestles everybody in their pool. And then what you do is you take those uh, top wrestlers from each pool, then you seed them out into the tournament. We're being told that they want to try to get every round in today uh, in the pool play, so we will see if that does come through. Uh, we do have a little bit different this year. We have four mats set up. We have two in the big gym, uh, two in the little gymnasium. Uh, so uh, we will be uh, seeing how that does come through. Just like everything else, Nolan, if there's pins here, pins there it does keep you then we do have some that go overtime but uh, off to a good start here we're already up to 113 on both uh, mats did get a little late start it was supposed to go at 11 o'clock but uh, that's always going to happen once you get those brackets set up then it does seem to roll a little bit smoother yeah we got rolling uh, in 113 there is going to be four uh, mats going but we're not sure on when they're going to add those two mats we look on the uh, if you go on to HPS Stream Team, all of our sponsor ads are run on Stream Team as well. Um, as they take breaks, uh, we'll be throwing those ads on there. But they have the two bottom ones are the two down in the little gym. And as of right now, they're kind of still kind of practicing warming up. So I'm not sure if they're going to just start JV down there. Maybe later on this afternoon, they'll start mixing in the uh, varsity matches down there just to get through these rounds because you're not going to get through five rounds today. I hate to break it to people, but. Well. That, that's their goal. Yeah. Unless we're back to the days when Epperly rest, wrestled at 12.05 or whatever time <laughs> that was after midnight. Um, yeah. So we're uh, one match in for the Nighthawks. Next action will be Kyler Shalesky at 120 pounds. We will uh, hopefully try to keep track of some Lemon Kids, uh, Bowman County uh, Beach, uh, the Bucket Dogs. We'll mention those a little bit. But right, basically the focus on the Nighthawk wrestlers. First time we've had a chance to really see them amongst uh, uh, cancellations, postponements. They're kind of in the same boat as us. They missed a lot of practice time as well and one or two tournaments. Yeah, you know, and the thing is coming in today, Nolan, everybody's on the same page. And we've talked about it every year. One of the most important tournaments is right after Christmas. Uh, we did have a little bit of an extended break this year for Christmas all the way around. But uh, the biggest thing is getting back in. You're going to see now there's so many changes with weight classes. It used to be where you had to certify before Christmas. Um, but now they've kind of changed that where you can kind of be jockeying around. You have to be within so many pounds. And then up until regionals, we could have somebody that's wrestled one weight class all year and uh, all of a sudden regionals show up and they're in a different weight class. That never used to happen. You used to have to have that certification. You could do one or two ups and then you had to be at that weight class uh, for the regional tournament. So okay. a lot of different things have changed. Uh, uh, so uh, it's, it, again, big, big tournament, good turnout. I think we had 18 teams. Um, so uh, we're going to be seeing uh, some good matches uh, throughout the day. Somebody said close to 270 some. 
270-some wrestlers throughout uh, the whole tournament. And is that right, 17 teams? I got, yep, I got 17. Okay. We'll, we'll list those teams off for you real quickly. Um, they are Bowman County Beach, Hedinger Scranton Nighthawks, uh, Moorcroft, Baker, Sturgis Brown, Watford City, Standing Rock, Miles City, Harding County, McLaughlin, Kildare, Faith, Newtown Partial, they are in a co-op there, uh, Lemon, Dawson County, Cheyenne Eagle Butte, and Baker. And I'm not sure, is McIntosh in on that with Lemon? They don't I was have just going to ask you the same thing, if it's still Lemon McIntosh. Yeah, they don't have them listed as Lemon McIntosh. Right now, it just says Lemon, so we'll go with that. If anybody else has other information, I know they co-op in football. Yeah. Uh, so, and I know they have in the past in wrestling, but um, we do not have that listed. But um, once again, 120-pound weight class will be Kyler Shaleski. Um, we'll take a little bit of break, listen to some of our sports sponsors, and be back with more of the 2023 Hedinger Classic back in just a bit. All right, welcome back here to the Robert Trinke Auditorium, the Nighthawk Classic. Um, Riley Hasbrook is already, already won by pin. That was 21 seconds. Kyler Shalesky at 120 pounds will be coming up next. And I think we've got five, five matches at 120 before his, and we're still sitting at 113 pounds. So we probably got another 10 minutes here before Kyler Shalesky gets out unless we're just now jumping into the 120. These maybe look like 120 pounders coming up. 
but we'll try to get as many uh, matches in as we can. We'll be here uh, throughout the evening to a certain point, but uh, stick around the KDC 1490 AM 106.7 FM. We'll take a break, come back with Kyler Cholesky in just a bit. Yeah, we'll be here, we'll be here till midnight.
welcome back, Tyler Shalesky. All right, Shalesky comes in at 120 pounds. He's going to be taking on David Fees. Fees comes in from Faith. Shalesky going to shoot in on a single leg, go to a double, pick up two on the takedown. I think Shalesky is going to be one of the taller 120 pounders in this weight class. See a lot of other wrestlers a little bit short, stockier. Shalesky is going to come in uh, one of the taller ones and used to like to use the legs and the arms to his advantage. Right now he's going to go in between the arms. He's going to get a cheap tilt. See if he picks up some points there, right near the edge of the mat. Shalesky trying to pull fees back towards the mat. Kind of right on the edge, minute 17 to go, still first period. Shalesky leads at 2-0, and we'll see if he gets some near fall or not. Still has the arm hooked up, now he's gonna restart. Still right near the edge of the mat. Minute two to go, stalemate is called, and no near fall was given, so where we stand right now, 2-0, Shalesky. Fees will be in the down position. Right off the whistle, Fee's gonna try to control the hands. Shalesky uses that leverage and he's gonna step across. Has a little bit of a chicken wing. Now he's gonna restart, go through the legs again. 48 seconds to go first period. Shalesky still in control over Fees. Now he's gonna step through, he's got Fees on his back. He's got plenty of time, he's got 37 seconds to go. Still first period and Shalesky picks up a fall with 31 seconds to go in the first period here at 120 over David Fees of Faith. the next three weeks? Yes. What happened to all the wrestlers? Uh, yeah, we're open at 126, we're open at 132, we're open at 138. Now the only thing I can think of, Nolan, is maybe um, maybe we're putting some of those younger kids in the JV division. I, I, I'm not sure. Um, no. In the lower class. I, uh, yeah, I can't remember that. So coming up, the next match will be 145. Then we'll go into 152, so we got Frank and then Blackwell. And then we don't have a 60 or a 70 pounder. So then we go up to 182. So yeah, kind of a, a different year where we are used to going sometimes two per weight class. Uh, now we're, I think, four or five weight classes where we do not have everybody in the varsity division. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Usually they try to split those up. If you have two from the uh, some for two from the same team, you usually put them in pool A or pool B, not together. So there must be a reason that uh, they put them in the same pool. So early on, those two will probably wrestle each other, um, which you know you really don't like to see no matter what. You want to be uh, wrestling kids from other towns because you're wrestling with that person every day in the wrestling room. But uh, hey, it is what it is, and uh, we'll see what happens. Yes. Yeah, and then open at 285. And I think, uh, you know, going back to either 26 or 32, <laughs> Tanner Defoe, I know he uh, injured some ribs. Um, I know that that's one that, that uh, you know, that would normally be in there. And then uh, one of the... I think uh, the younger Dally, um, he's at one of those weight classes, and uh, they're probably putting him maybe in uh, uh, in the JV division as well. So uh, again, one of those days where uh, not usual, where we see two, four, six, uh, eight, eight wrestlers out of the 
14 is their weight classes. It's not, uh, yeah, it's a little bit different to see that from the Nighthawks, but hey, we'll see how well those eight wrestlers do throughout the course of the tournament. And uh, and then I'm sure that some of those others are probably in the JV division. And, and the other thing to remember is we also do have a girls division going on um, at the same time uh, during this tournament. That's for sure. And we will, uh, if you're out there on uh, stream team, uh, I got two texts, actually three texts, about the Lemon McIntosh comment. McIntosh does have two kids that wrestle for Lemon, so okay. there is the co-op there. We want to thank those people for listening, and we'll try to keep you up to date on the uh, Lemon McIntosh Cowboys as well as we get through this uh, Nighthawk Classic. So stick close. Going to have a little bit of a break here. Nighthawks next up at 145, so let's take a break on KDC Hedinger and send it back to the studios on this Friday afternoon. Oh, there's Dally there. Yeah, I've never...
covered that up.
All right, good afternoon and welcome back here to the 2023 Nighthawk Classic. We're going to run down some uh, results. We've only had two matches here since 11.30, so we're kind of slow going here for the Nighthawks. We had three opens at 126, 32, and 38. Jaron Frank will be up here in a couple seconds. Riley Hasbrook, Kyler Shaleski, each picking up victories in the first round. We'll give you a quick update on the Lemon Cowboys. Max Anderson uh, received a bye at 120. Gage Anderson won by pin over Tristan Swanson of Dawson County. 126. Uh, looks like Cash Sheely lost 7-5. And those are the only matches. They have uh, three more kids going and all have a first round bye. So they only had, they've kind of had a slow morning as well here. But uh, uh, looking at this, uh, the Night Ox uh, will get back into Jaron Frank right now. He's coming out onto the mat. Uh, Jaron will come in at 145 pounds and looks like he will take on Keenan Huber of Dawson County. All right, so Frank and Huber. Of course, Dawson County's Glendive, uh, Danny Henderson, uh, Hedinger alumni and old Black Devil uh, coaching at Glendive. They did do a duel last night between Glendive, uh, Moorcroft, uh, Hedinger Scranton, and one other team, so kind of a, a neat deal. Nice thing about that is every wrestler then today, Nolan got another pound. So that was kind of a nice little addition for him. So right away, Frank, he's going to hook up, drive down on a single leg, and he's going to come around, do a little shuck. Nice job by Huber to fight that uh, little flurry off. Frank going to shoot in on a single, looks to a double. Trying to get off to the side. Huber hanging on that, on that ankle. Now Frank again trying to turn the corner. Neither guy in really good position. Now Frank a little bit better position. Now Huber is going to grab that leg. He's going to try to put his hips down. Nice. Huber in a little bit better position. Stalemate is called. Minute 21 to go. Still first period. No score between Frank and Huber. Jaron right off the whistle going to try to control the hands. Front headlock thrown in by Frank. Now down to a single. Nice job by Jaron. Huber in a little bit of trouble as he's on his hips. He's going to give up the two on the takedown. Now Frank just needs to work up towards the hips. There we go. There's the two. So 2-0 two is your score. 56 seconds to go. First period, Jaron Frank leads it over Keenan Huber from Glendive. Frank again trying to throw a little bit of a tilt in. Has that arm hooked up. Just going to try to throw the hips over. Still no points. Is trying to expose the back and he'll re restart. 2-0. 32 seconds to go first period. Now Frank going to try to hook up on that inside arm. Just a little bit of a half Nelson attempt right now. Huber good control of the hands. 15 seconds to go first period. Still no change. Huber going to try a little sit-up. Frank pulls him right back, right near the edge of the mat. And that's the way the first period is going to end. 2-0, Frank. He leads it over Huber. Welcome back to Wrestling Action. Frank takes down. He's going to hit a nice inside switch, and he's going to throw Huber towards his back. So Frank's going to pick up two on the reversal and in really good position right now as he's got Huber on his back, and now Huber's going to work towards his stomach, but not before Frank picks up two on the reversal and three on the near fall. And just like that, it's 7-0. So a nice flurry by Jaron Frank. 
as he leads it 7-0. Minute 15 to go, second period. It will be Huber's choice, third period. Frank again, trying just a little tilt, just trying to throw the hips up. No points there, good control of the wrist. One minute to go, second period. Jaron Frank leads it 7-0 for Keenan Huber from Glendive. Frank again got, a, got that little arm hooked up, just trying to work it over, controlling the hips. Gonna restart. Now a power half thrown in. Now Frank just needs to run it. If he does, he'll have Huber on his back again. He's picking up near fall points. So he will pick up at least two, I believe. Oh. Should get two, I guess uh, officials said it was kind of back and forth, so uh, you have to have a count of two con continuously. 7-0, 18 seconds to go, second period. Now Frank, nice chin drop. Boy, nice little chin drop. You don't see that very often. Just grab the chin, pull him straight back. Picks up two more, I believe. And that's the way the second period ends. Frank leads it 9-0. We also have uh, Tanner Blackwell, Devin Greff coming up. Uh, those are in separate matches. Uh, girls division, uh, looks like Jennifer Burden will wrestle. And also in the varsity will be Akalia Olsen. So we'll have updates from those two. I think they're going to have those down in the small gym that you can watch on uh, stream TV. Okay, there we go. Third period, we're going to go neutral. 9-0, Frank leads it as he picked up two on the near fall on that nice little chin drop. Well, that's a, that's old school there. You just don't see a lot of chin drops. Just basically grab the chin, pull them straight back, and get some near fall points. Right now, Huber's hooked up on a front headlock and a little bit of trouble is Frank. He's got to get that head up and keep those hips away. There we go, right near the edge of the mat. Huber, yep, off the mat. 9-0, minute 23 to go, third period. Nice front headlock by Huber. We're both in the neutral position. Jaron likes to tie up. Let's see if he goes down to those ankles. He likes that little single, that little heel pick. The one thing you got to watch out for is Huber down 9-0. He's going to try some throws. Now he's going to hop in on a single leg. Frank going to throw in what we call a whizzer. He's just going to throw his hand over the arm. And no control either way. Now Huber in good position. He'll pick up two. So Frank gives up two on the takedown. Still leads it 9-2. 48 sec. Oh, nice switch by Frank. Just hits a nice little switch. Gets the hips around. Picks up two on the reversal. That moves the score now to 11 to two. 35 seconds to go, third period. Once again in the round robin, it still will stay two minute, two minute, two minute. When we get into the consolation tomorrow, you're gonna see some matches that go one, two, two. 15 seconds to go, Frank in control here, 11 to two as he pretty much dominated from the first whistle, Keenan Huber from Glendive. And that's the way it's gonna end. Frank wins it, 11-2. All right, so that is Jaron Frank picking up the win. As you said, 11-2 will have pick, go to 1-0 in the pool. Uh, Jaron will have, uh, once again, we go five rounds of wrestling. Uh, next up will be this next round uh, looks like uh, Devin Greff will be going up against Regan Schaefer. Tanner Blackwell will have Kelvin Kettleson of Sturgis Brown. And those matches coming up here in a little bit. We're at 145. We have a few matches to get through before we uh, step up with Tanner Blackwell and then Devin Greff. Those will be your next two matches. We'll have a couple opens and then we'll come back with Tristan Picas, Nick Anderson, Bowden Hasbrook. And with the uh, time that we're doing this and it's been two hours just to get the 152 so we either got to pick up the pace or uh, yeah. could be either a lot of wrestling tomorrow or late tonight one of the two yeah, they've got they've got five rounds set up for the uh, 
they got five rounds set up for the uh, round robin. So, uh, yeah, you know, if you do an average of two and a half, you know, my, my elementary math tells me that's 10 hours, right? Yeah. A little bit more. So. A little bit more. So we'll see what happens. Yep. Okay. All right. Let's take a break. We'll pause here from our sports sponsors and be back with more wrestling action from the Nighthawk Classic when we come back.
All right, welcome back to the Hedinger Classic as Tanner Blackwell has come out onto the mat. He's taken on Kelvin Kellislin from Sturgis. We're up to 152 pounds. We will be waiting on Devin Greff also. So Blackwell and Kettleson. Kettleson gonna drop down on a single leg. Blackwell trying to control the hips in a little bit of trouble right here. He doesn't wanna go towards his back. So right now he's hanging onto the leg and the hip. Hopefully we get a stalemate. There we go, now he needs to get back to his stomach because Kettleson's gonna pick up two, there you go. Because the worst thing to do is hang on to that too long and give up the takedown and the near fall. So Blackwell did the wise thing to let go, and now Kettleson going to try to pick up some near fall points as he's got Blackwell kind of headed towards his back right near the edge of the mat. And now he does have him on his back, and Kettleson settling in, and he's got plenty of time. He's got 48 seconds. Blackwell in trouble here at 152 pounds. Kettleson, Kellison, excuse me from Sturgis Brown in control as he's gonna pick up at least three on the near fall. If not a fall, he's still got 30 seconds. But credit Blackwell doing a good job of keeping this arm up on this side. It's helpless feeling right near the edge and they keep pulling you on and you can't get off. But credit Blackwell still has 15 seconds to fight it off. Either way you turn in, you're gonna get tighter and tighter. Exactly. Oh, and there's the fall. He gives it up with eight seconds to go. So Kellison from Sturgis Brown picks up a fall over Blackwell. All right, so that was a minute 52, and right away Devin Greff is going to come out same weight class, and he will take on Regan Schaefer of Broadus. So that's town number 18. All right. First time I've seen Broadus. Yep, the Broadus Hawks. That's got to be a long ways also to come out here, isn't it, Broadus? Yeah. But then again, I used to think Bowman was a long ways away. Back in the day when we had to ride the horse and pull the cart and everything else. 152 pounds. Once again, uh, Graf taking on Schaefer. 237 miles. There you go, 237. About three and a half, four hours. All right. So Greff comes out right away, going to hook up onto the arms. Schaefer. There we go. Both guys staying on the mat. Schaefer going to drop down on a single. Devin got to get the hips a little heavy. Nice thing about Devin, he's got those long arms. He just kind of reaches down and grabs the ankle. Now Schaefer going to go to a double. Greff still hanging on to that ankle right near the edge of the mat. Let's see if Devin can get out. Yep, nice job by Devs playing the edge here. One thing though, he's got to keep those hips in. Definitely has the height advantage and the reach advantage. I'd like to see a nice little heel pick. Oh, nice single by Graf. And then he's going to come. Oh, I thought he's going to come around the corner. Boy, he had a nice single and then he's going to come around. But uh, again, a little inexperience right now as he gets a little bit more mat time. Uh, he'll uh, try to finish that next time. He'll. Try to turn the corner right now in a tie-up situation. Maybe get out of this. He wants to stay open and kind of use that, that length to his advantage. Drop down on that single or double again. A minute two to go first period. Still no score. And that's what Schaefer does. He drops down on a single, goes to a double. Right near the edge of the mat, off we go. So Devin's got to protect that leg. Right off the mat, Schaefer's dropping down on that right leg. And there it is again. Now kind of catches him with the front headlock. Now Schaefer's going to turn the corner. Devin's got to clear the hands. Schaefer brings him down. He'll pick up two. So Schaefer will pick up the first two. He leads it. 40 seconds to go, first period. Schaefer going to try to control the hands. Greff fighting him off. Good base by Greff. He's got to stay busy here now. Keep the hands from getting, uh, you know, where they need to be, whether it's a cross face, whether it's underneath the arm, two on one, whatever we might do. And right now, that's what Schaefer's doing. He's got a two on one, trying to stack ref. 10 seconds to go, first period. 
Now Devin going to try to get up. He needs to get out, clear the hands, and get a point before the period ends here. He should get one. There we go. Nice. He gets one with one second to go, so that's going to move the score two to one. And that's the way the first period is going to end. Ref's going to trail it two to one to Schaefer from Broadus. Yeah, and Devin, uh, this is his first year wrestling. Obviously he wrestled when he was younger, but uh, hasn't wrestled at the varsity level and uh, done well so far. He's, he's picked up some big wins this year. Well, and it's not like you're jumping into the 106-pound 100 uh, weight class. You're jumping all the way up to 152. So, yeah, nice job put in by Greff. We went neutrals to start the second period. And as these matches go on, each time he gets in the wrestling room, each time he gets a, a varsity match, the confident and the experience is definitely going to gain. Now Schaefer in a, a nice double leg. Boy, that was a nice shot by Schaefer. He had Greff kind of on his heels, took advantage, picked up two right near the edge of the mat. He will now lead it four to one. Will Schaefer, Greff will be down. Right off the whistle, he's gonna try to stand up his Greff. Schaefer does a nice job of controlling the hands and the ankle. Devin needs to keep the pressure on. There we go. Get up and out, use that, use that length. There we go, he's up again. So nice shot by Greff as he picks up one on the escape. Now right away, shoots in on a single leg. He needs to keep his head up. He's got it, he can't sit down there. There we go, he's pulling in the leg. Keep the head up and walk around. Nice shot by Greff. If he hooks that leg, he'll pick up two. Oh, he's got to hook up that leg. Oh man, just about. And again, with experience, that'll come. He's got to watch out for a throw. Nice job of getting out of the tie. Four to two, 45 seconds to go, second period. Both guys doing a lot of nice things here. Nice shots. Right near the edge of the mat. Devin needs to drop down on that single again. He's got the height advantage and he's been able to grab that single. He wants to stay out of this tie. And I remember those days though, Nolan. I need a little break, so I'm gonna tie up. Yeah. I'm gonna get I'm gonna get some of my gas back in me. Nice shot by Devin. He's gotta keep the head up. He's gotta keep the head up and walk towards the corner. Now he's gonna pull back. Schaefer gonna hook up on a double underhook. And both guys gonna restart. Oh, headlock thrown by Greff, but he misses it. Oh, he tried the headlock, and Schaefer slipped off, and now he's got Greff on his back. Oh, good thing he ran out of time because he could have picked up the fall. So Greff tried a headlock, slipped off, and then unfortunately, he went to his back and gave up two more. So that leaves the score eight to two going into the third period. All right, Schaefer will take down. Now a couple of things to think about here. So now he's down by six. So he's going to say, okay, do I let him go? Do I, uh, you know, or do I just throw him on his back and pin him? That'd be the easiest. Schaefer going to stand up. Ref has that headlock still hooked up on the front. Now he's going to let him go. So now he's got his work cut out for him as he's down by seven. He's got to set up that headlock though. Last time he threw the headlock, he didn't set it up. Now he's got it set up. Now he needs to, oh, Schaefer felt that coming and off the mat we go. That time he did have it hooked up a little bit better. So off the mat, we will restart. Nine to two, third period, minute 35 to go. Schaefer shoots in on a single leg. Ref's gotta get his hips back. Schaefer in pretty good position. Now Devin trying to go through the hip, trying a little toss. And again, this is where the length can help him, but also it can hurt you. You don't want to give up any points and go to your back. And that's what happened there. Devin gave up the takedown, a good thing going back towards his stomach. So Greff will give up two on the takedown. One minute to go, 11-2, Schaefer. Schaefer, oh, he's got a chicken wing and he throws Greff towards his back. Now Greff gonna come back through. 
Devin's got to keep going through. For some reason, our coach just walked right across the mat. <laughs> I think the official was like, uh, what are you doing? <laughs> Guess he doesn't, he wanted the shortcut. So, 29 seconds to go. 11 to two is your score. Graf got to try to clear the hands and try one more desperation move here as he's down by nine. 10 seconds to go. And again, each match, Graf will get a little bit more confidence, a little bit more experience. Right now, he's, uh, he's gassed right now. So 11 to two, Graf will go down, but a nice match put in by both Schaefer and Graf at 152. All right, that sets up another little mini break for us here. We go on the 160, 170 pound, both opens. Then we'll have Tristan Picas, Nick Anderson, Bowden Hasbrook. We'll follow that, and I'm not sure where they're doing the girls yet. Um, Jennifer Verdon and Kalia Olson will be wrestling varsity, but uh, they're still kind of up in the air in what they're doing there. They are gonna move. Um, after two hours, which was probably about noon, so I'm thinking right around two o'clock they'll start throwing tea or kids down into the small gym. And right now, when you're watching it on uh, stream team, that is mats three and four are on the, uh, the small gym. Mats one and two are up here in the big gym. That's the ones that we're broadcasting. Obviously, we can't get down there, but we're kind of watching it up here. But right now. So many different color singlets, and we don't know who's who, but we'll try to keep you up to date. If, we, if some of our kids get down there, we'll uh, definitely try to get it for you, but if not, we'll have the update for you at the conclusion of the match. All right, let's take a break. Be back on KNDC Hedinger, back at 182 pounds with Tristan Picas when we come back here in about 15 to 20 minutes. So I just...
front entrance at the ticket counter at the ticket table. They're ten bucks a piece. They are available at the ticket table. Raffle tickets. Go to the ticket table. Get your ticket. Welcome back to the Hedinger Classic as Nick Anderson's going to be taking the Mac against Tucker Turbeville. Anderson going to shoot in. He's going to pick up a takedown. He's going to take Turbeville towards his back and he's going to pick up a pin. So a nice inside cradle and Anderson able to come back through, pick up the takedown, put Turbeville towards his back and pick up a pin at 195. So what a way to come back to the classic as Anderson 
Wins by fall over Turboville from Baker. Also coming up on the mat, we will be having eventually Tristan Picas at 180. And then at 220, we will also be having Bowden Hasbrook. So Picas, uh, he will be coming up shortly. Um, he'll be taking on uh, Wyatt Allerud from Moorcroft. And then at 220, we will be having Bowden Hasbrook, uh, his match, and Bowden will be taking on Oh, he's got a bye. No, first round he'll be taking on Jackson Miller. So Jackson Miller from Miles City and Hasbrook at 220. So right now we're still in the uh, first round. Uh, again, they will be starting to do some of the matches down in the small gymnasium. If you are watching on stream team, there is a split screen. Mats three and four are in the little gym. Mats one and two are in the big gym. So once again, Anderson just comes through with a pin over the boy from Baker. Short time there at 195. We'll be back shortly with Tristan Picas at the Hedinger Classic. Welcome back to the Hedinger Classic. Bowden Hasbrook taking the mat at 220. Bowden's going to be taking on Jackson Miller from Miles City. And as I was looking at the bout sheets, it looks like at 182, Picas and the other wrestlers will be going in the next round. So we will keep you updated. But again, 182 will be going in the next round. Hasbrook going to come around. He's going to pick up two on the takedown. Nice shot by Bowden as he comes around. Now he's got that arm. He's trying to work it towards the back. He's got Miller flat on his stomach. 
First action for Bowden uh, today at the Classic. So a good start to Bowden's campaign here in 2023. Now Miller gonna try to work up towards his ballot. Now he's gonna grab a leg as Miller. Bowden still in control, 2-0. Now Bowden has a front headlock hooked up. He's gonna to try to walk him around. So Hasbrook trying to pick up some near fall points. There he is. He's picking up some near fall points. If he settles in, there we go. Get chest on chest, heavy on the hips. 40 seconds, there's the fall. So Hasbrook comes back through and he picks up a pin here at 220 um, in just a little bit over one minute. So nice job by Hasbrook as he wins by fall at 220 over Jackson Miller from Mile City. So that's gonna do it for the round one. Again, we will double check on the 182. I believe they're gonna be uh, uh, going just into the second round. It's uh, not a big weight class. Uh, so they're gonna just kinda do a, a different type of bracketing for the 182. Other than that, most weight classes uh, have uh, two separate pools that are full. So it's gonna be a lot more wrestling and we're still again not done with round one. We are up to the big though. We're at 220 on both mats. Uh, and then we'll go into 285, and then we'll keep you updated on when round two will start. And again, that'll be starting with, uh, at 113, Riley Hasbrook for the Nighthawks will be the first wrestler out at 113. So stay tuned. You're listening to KNDC 1490, the Hedinger Classic. Stay tuned. Thank all those great sponsors for making this possible today and tomorrow on KNDC. See you in a bit.
In the hole on four, Williams, Moorcroft, Anderson, Lemon. as we are getting ready for Riley Hasbrook at 113 pounds. Hasbrook's going to be taking on Maxwell Anderson from Lemon McIntosh. So once again, Anderson and Hasbrook, 113 pounds. Once again, this is the second round. We are starting to use the small gym, so we might see a, a little bit quicker pace going into these next couple of rounds as we get through the day. In the hole on two, foot. New John Marshall, so both Hasbrook and Anderson right now trying to hook up on the head. Hasbrook was victorious by fall in 21 seconds, his first match. I will check on Anderson. Hasbrook going to drop down on a single leg right near the edge of the mat. Off we go. No change. No score. Back to the middle we come. Once again, Hasbrook was in on a nice single leg, but just ran out of room near the edge of the mat. Riley going to try a little swing by. Now he's going to get behind Anderson. He needs to bring him back down to the mat. There he does. And now he'll pick up two on the takedown. So Riley Hasbrook will lead it 2-0 over Max Anderson from Lemon McIntosh. Now Riley going to try to hook up on that chicken wing on this side. Minute two to go, first period. 2-0 is your score. Anderson trying to pull the arm back. Hasbrook still has that chicken wing. Now he's going to walk over the head, and Riley's going to have Anderson in trouble. Now Anderson is going to come through. Nice job by Anderson to roll through with Hasbrook. Now Hasbrook's going to come back, try to settle in. Still no near fall. Still no near fall point. So Riley will pick up two, but it credit Anderson to roll right through as it looked like Riley was going to pick up two on the near fall. Now Riley going to restart. He's going to go through the leg, step through, and try to throw Anderson on his back one more time. 
Still no change. We're down to 10 seconds. First period. Now Riley's picking up some near fall points. So he's going to pick up at least three. He's not going to pin him from there, but he's going to pick up three on the near fall. So we'll be back in 30 with Riley Hasbrook. Welcome back to the Hedinger Classic as Riley Hasbrook leads at five to zero. We're in second period action at 113 pounds. Now Hasbrook's gonna be picking up some more near fall points as he leads it over Maxwell Anderson. Now Riley gonna throw in the arm one more time, walk it up towards the head, and he's gonna pick up some more near fall points. Riley leads it five zero. Let's see how many he'll pick up here. At least three, if not a fall. He still has Anderson headed towards his back. Minute seven to go, second period. And that's close, there's the fall. So Hasbrook, he'll pick up a pin at 113 over Anderson from Lemon McIntosh. So there you go, Hasbrook victorious. We'll be waiting here on Kyler Shalesky at 120. So we'll be back with Shalesky at 120. You're listening to the Hedinger Classic on KNDC 1490. In the hole, Matt Three, Miller, Baker, Bosch, Spearfish. In the hole, Matt Four, Dumas, Killier, Ramos, Killier. In the hole, Matt One, Daniels, Sturgis, Shiley, Lemon. In the hole, Matt Two.
At three, Steinbrunn, Boston County, Gray, Moorcroft.
Welcome back to the Hedinger Classic as we're getting ready for Tanner Blackwell. Unfortunately, we have uh, kind of the luck of the draw. We've had some of our wrestlers go down to the mats three and four. We did have Kyler Shaleski. He went down to mat three. He was victorious by Tech Fall, 15 to zero. Also, Jaron Frank is currently down on mat four, and that leads us to Blackwell. And right now, Blackwell is going to be taking on Emery Noel. Let me back up on that. This isn't Emery Noel. This is Tegan Tavet from Miles City. So Miles City, Tavet and Blackwell. Blackwell going to give up a takedown. Tavet going to take him down right near the edge of the mat. So we'll restart. So 2-0, Tvet leads it on the restart now. Blackwell going to try to sit out. He's going to try to come through on a switch. No change of position as of yet. Minute 19 to go, still first period. Tvet leads this one 2-0 over Blackwell. Vet right now going to try to put up on an inside cradle. He's going to have Blackwell kind of towards his back. Tanner needs to get that arm through and not give up near fall points. So good job by Blackwell not to give up near fall points and off the edge we go. So that'll stay at 2-0 in favor of Tvet from Mile City. Devin Greff again will also be down on mat number four in the small gym. So once we uh, get the Results, we will pass those along. Kyler Shaleski again was victorious, 15-0 by Tech Fall. Jaron Frank currently down there. Devin Greff currently down there. And that leads us to Blackwell, who right now trails it 2-0 to Tavet from Miles City at 152 pounds. Vet going to try to throw in a half Nelson. Now he's going to bring that arm back into a chicken wing series, and he's going to go a one-on-one. -on -one. Blackwell needs to clear the hands. Now the vet going to throw in a half Nelson from the near side, right near the edge of the mat. 21 seconds to go. Welcome back to the Hedinger Classic as right now Tanner Blackwell out on the mat against Vet from Wild City. Vet leads it 6-2. to two. Blackwell going to try to come back through. Now Vet's going to pick up some more points on a reversal and he leads it now 6-4. And he's picking up some near fall points. In the hole, Matt, too. So right now, Blackwell in a little bit of trouble at 152. Tavet from Miles City has him on his back and he's got both arms hooked up. So Blackwell needs to keep sliding to the side, clear the arm and stay off. There we go. Now Blackwell in a little better position. Tavet from Miles City in a little bit better control. He's going to pick up three is Tavet. That's going to move the score now to 7-6. to six. To Vet from Mile City leads it over Tanner Blackwell for the Nighthawks. 7-6, 45 seconds to go, second period. Once again, Kyler Shaleski was victorious, 15-0 by Tech Fall on Matt 3 in the Little Gym. And currently, Jaron Frank and Devin Greff also in Matt 3 down in the Little Gym. 
So Blackwell trails it 7-6, 37 seconds to go. Second period. Tavet going to put Blackwell towards his back one more time. So he's going to pick up at least two, if not three. We're down to 26 seconds to go. Second period. Tavet just basically kind of reached around the arm. Threw Blackwell towards his back, so he's going to pick up three. Still has the same hold. Eight seconds to go, second period. Tavet in control, so let's see. He's going to pick up at least three, so that's going to move the score 10-6. So we'll be back in 30 with Tanner Blackwell.
Welcome back to the Nighthawk Classic. The uh, round so far, we've had some lucky ones up in the big gym. Other than that, most of our matches have been in the small gym. So up to this point, I will update where we sit right now. Uh, at 120 pounds, Kyler Shalewski, he was victorious by technical fall. Once again, that is 15 points or more. So T Kyler Shalewski was victorious by a score of 15 to zero. And uh, let's see here, he uh, defeated, bout number four, he defeated LaPlante from Eagle Butte. Okay, so then we jumped up all the way to 145. Jaron Frank was sent down to the little gym. And again, Frank, uh, he comes in and he was by, victorious by fall in one minute and five seconds over Roy Antrim from Faith. So again, Frank victorious by fall at 145 pounds. At 152 pounds, Tanner Blackwell. He was defeated by the score of 14 to eight by Tweet from Miles City. 14 to eight, he was defeated. And uh, we are waiting on Devin Greff. Uh, Devin Greff, uh, let's see here, bout number four. He will be taking on Emery Noel. Uh, from Bowman County Beach, and I believe they also are down. Yes, they are. They are down in the small gym as well. So once again, Greff and Noel have not wrestled yet. They will be in this small gym. So that takes us up to 182. We will have Tristan Pekus, Nicholas Anderson, and Bowden Hasbrook. Now, unfortunately, we do have the uh, we do have the screen for mats three and four, but it does not show a score. So uh, you will be watching that, but there's no way that we can uh, call the match because we don't have the uh, access to the score uh, for you. So uh, we're kind of with the uh, luck of the roll right now. So hopefully we can get Pekus, Anderson, and Hasbrook up in the large gym on either mats one or two, and then we can call those mats for you. Once again, we are right now at 170 pounds in round number two. Um, no team results as of yet. So once we get uh, once we get some of those uh, uh, up, we will uh, update you. We will also then give an update on some of the Lemon McIntosh and Bowman County uh, as we do go through this round. So, once again, stay tight, listen to KNDC. We want to thank all those sponsors. And again, hopefully, Picus, Anderson, and Hasbrook can be up here on mat number one and two so we can bring you all the action on KNDC. With that, I will send it back to the station and keep track on KNDC for more Nighthawk Classic action.
we're going to get through our first round of the girls' division first.
Welcome back to the Hedinger Classic as we're rounding up uh, round number two. Here's how it went. We had uh, Kyler Shalesky winning by Tech Fall, 15 to zero. Jaron Frank won by Fall in 105. Let me get you some names here. So again, Frank victorious in 105 over eight Atrium. Uh, he comes in from Faith. And then we jump up to 152. Blackwell was defeated by Tveet from Miles City by a score of 14 to 8. Uh, Devin Graff uh, still kind of looking for scores there down in the uh, uh, in the other uh, in Matt. He was taking on the boy from Bowman County. We did have a bye for Anderson and a bye for Hasbrook and also Picas. So Picas is uh, the one thing that's happening there is there aren't a lot of 182 pounders. So what they're doing is they're doing a round robin and they must be going to start here within the next couple of rounds. So I'm going to see here if I can find how Greff did. Uh, Greff was defeated by Noel of Bowman County Beach by a score of 6-3. to three. So again, Greff loses 6-3 to three to Noel from Bowman County Beach. Now here's what's going to happen this round. We're going to be doing a round of girls uh, up on match number one and two. And coming up, we will have Jennifer Verdon and Akalia Olson. So once we find out uh, who they will be wrestling, uh, we will call those matches. We will, again, be doing rounds, uh, first round of girls uh, tournament division on mats one and two. So the other uh, mats, again, will be down in the small gym, mats number three and four. So, again, kind of the luck of the draw. If we're able to uh, call the mats, uh, uh, we'll try to keep you updated, again, on everything that's going on, but stay tuned to uh, listen to Jennifer Verdon and Akalia Olson on KNDC 1490.
Welcome back to the Hedinger Classic as Jennifer Verdon going to be taking on Kuntz from Kildare. Once again, this is the first round of the girls. Verdon's going to pick up two on the takedown. We will be doing mats one and two up in the large gym for girls division round one. Verdon going to step over the top. She's going to take Kuntz towards her back and she's going to pick up some near fall points. So Jennifer Verdon, a great start for the Nighthawks. Coming out, taking on Kuntz, and she's got Kuntz in trouble, and there's the fall. So Jennifer Verdon comes out, and she gets a pin in 48 seconds over Kuntz from Kildare. Now, we also have a Kalia Olsen. Uh, Kalia will be called up here pretty soon, so we'll keep an eye out for a Kalia. Uh, again, the two Nighthawk wrestlers uh, in this tournament. I will uh, check to see if there are some JV uh, wrestlers as well. But again, what we're doing, guys, is we're kind of the luck of the draw. If we're able to uh, have the wrestlers up in the large gym, we're able to count, call the match. Uh, again, the small gym, we do not have a score uh, that we can see where we could follow along and it's kind of hard to tell up here um, who it is that is wrestling. So round two in the books for the uh, for the guys uh, portion of the tourney now starting the first round of the girls. They will also be going into the third round right away uh, with the varsity boys and or excuse me varsity boys uh, in the uh, small gym mats three and four and then they will work their way back up here as well. So stay tuned to KNDC 1490 for more Nighthawk action and a Kaylee Olson coming up in just a little bit.
Welcome back to the Hedinger Classic. Again, we are in the middle of a girls' round up here in the uh, large gym. We did have Jennifer Verdon was victorious by fall in 48 seconds over Kuntz from Kildare. And again, what we're doing is we're doing a round of girls, uh, JV, uh, and uh, varsity will continue with round three uh, once we get through a round here. So we will keep you updated. Uh, Kaylee Olson going to be coming up uh, for the Nighthawks. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to send it back to the station and bring you back when a Kaylee Olson is going to be up for the Nighthawks.
the hole on Matt one. Searle, Newtown, Snyder, Sturgis.
in the hole on map three. Map three. Barry, Dawson County, Pennington, Norcross.
In the hole, on deck, Matt Tu. Arnegard, Watford City, Buckner, Moorcroft. In the hole, Matt Tu. Huber, Dawson County, Croft, Spearfish. In the hole, Matt One, Frank, Hedinger, Allison, Moorcroft. In the hole,
Welcome back to the Hedinger Classic as we're in round three. Just a quick update on some of the matches that uh, did take place in the last round. We did have the first round of the girls division and we did have uh, Jennifer Verdon. She was victorious by fall over Cami Kuntz of Kildare in 48 seconds. And Akali Olson did have a uh, bye last round, so she will have a match this second round. She'll be taking on Darla Barnes from yeah. Lemon McIntosh. So again, Burden victorious by fall. Akali Olson will have a second round match against Darla Barnes uh, from Lemon in the second round. Also, uh, this round, Riley Hasbrook uh, has a bye at 113. Kyler Schreiber Leski was victorious in uh, in the small gym by a tech fall by a score of 17 to 1. We are currently about 30 seconds away from Jaron Frank taking the mat. Uh, he will be taking on Richie Allison from Moorcroft. Devin Greff was called down to mat three, still waiting on Tanner Blackwell. And I was told finally that Tristan Pekus will, will have a match this round. And then again, we'll look at Nick Anderson and Bowden Hasbro as both of those guys had buys last round. So again, we're in round three. What I've been told is they're going to try to do five rounds tonight. So uh, it is going a little bit quicker uh, when you're able to utilize the small gym. Um, but uh, again, we'll just kind of let everybody know uh, where we're at with that. So again, Jaron Frank going to be taking the mat here at 145. He's going to be taking on Richie Allison from the Moorcroft Wolves. Quite a display when you look at Moorcroft. They brought two huge buses up here. Uh, again, this is a varsity, a junior varsity, and a girls. And then also there's a sixth grade division. So uh, you talk about some wrestling going on uh, here in the big gym and the small gym at Hedinger. Uh, it's happening. There's a lot of people around. All right, so here we go. Frank and Allison. 145 pounds. Once again, these are in the pool play. You uh, best records in uh, this pool will take on the best records of the other starting tomorrow. Frank's going to pick up two on a nice shock by. So Jaron's going to pick up the first two on the takedown. Nice little deep waist and control in the hands right near the edge of the mat. Minute 35 still to go first period. Jaron Frank comes in the junior. Not sure what Allison is. Off the mat we go, we will restart. Good job of officiating today to this point. Uh, uh, we, got have, we have six officials and uh, they've been working nonstop. Uh, kudos to them, doing a nice job and jumping around from JV to girls to varsity. Uh, so, uh, and then running up and down to the big gym, to the little gym. Uh, so nice job on the officiating crew today. Frank going to take control of the arm. He's going to do a deep waist. And he's going to try to keep Allison right near the middle of the mat. Still in control, 2-0. Allison going to try a little bit of a switch. Nothing doing. As Frank able to control the arms and the waist. 52 seconds to go first period. So Frank... Always looking for a little bit of that step through between the legs, controlling the, the legs, the arms, kind of does a little spiral ride, always active, which is good. Uh, doesn't give uh, the official any, any chance to think that there's any kind of stall. 25 seconds to go first period. Frank still in control, 2-0 right near the edge of the mat. And off we go. And we will restart at middle circle. 16 seconds to go, still first period. Again, I think we counted 18 or 19 teams earlier this morning. Um, that's, uh, that's pretty good when you start looking at uh, the type of wrestling that you can bring in, South Dakota, Minnesota, um, excuse me, Wyoming, Montana, North Dakota, of course. So uh, a good uh, showing for everybody here. So Frank's going to lead this one 2-0. We'll be back in 30 with Jaron Frank.
All right, so Jaron Frank uh, took down. He got a reversal, and he just kind of started shaking his arm and his hand. Um, so we're going to take a little bit of an injury time. Not, uh, not sure what's going on there. He got a little tingly or something. And uh, so we're going to do a little injury. Uh, yeah, kind of weird. He just let the, he just let the boy from Warcraft go and started hitting his hand against the mat. Something must not feel right. So let's take another short time out, and we'll be back with Jaron Frank. Welcome back to the Hedinger Classic as uh, Jaron Frank took a little injury time. Uh, got a, must have got a little bit of a stinger or something on the elbow or the arm. And we're good to go as we're going to be back neutral now as Frank, again, just going to let him go. So that's going to move the score four to one as Jaron did hit a nice reversal and uh, then had something happen with that little wrist or arm. Now Frank going to shoot in on a double leg. He's going to pick up two on the takedown. So a nice shot by Frank. It's nice and low, goes right at the hips, and then he's got those legs hooked up, and he's going to go across, across the uh, chest here and kind of do a little bit of a semi-Turk, we call it. No change there. Just about got some near fall points. That leaves the score now 6-2. to two. You know, Frank in control. Roundy kill here. Silla. Still in control, controlling the arms and the hips, trying a little stack. Oh, he's going to get some near fall points. Two, two on the near fall, and uh, kind of worked out where Allison kind of, kind of rolled right into that himself. So uh, Frank going to pick up two on the near fall. That's going to move the score now to eight to two. Four, 27 four, seconds to go, second period. period. Right near the edge of the mat, and off they go. Restart in the center, it's 19 seconds to go. Second period, we're at 145 pounds. Once again, we will be checking to see where uh, Blackwell will be. I already know Greff is down on mat three in the little gym. So we will check on Tanner Blackwell. Right off the whistle. Allison going to try a little bit of a roll. Frank follows. Now he's going to let him go on the escape. So Allison's going to pick up one. That's going to move the score 8 3. That's the way the second period's going to end. We'll be back in 30 with Jaron Frank. Welcome back to the Hedinger Classic as Frank chooses down. He's going to come around. He's going to pick up a reversal. That moves the score 10 to 3. Jaron Frank in control over Richie Allison from Moorcroft. He's got him in a good position. If he could just kind of throw in that half and run it, he would have Allison towards his back. Now Allison getting back to his stomach. Frank going to throw in a chicken wing, and he's going to walk it over the head. And Allison tries to roll through, but Frank catches him. So he's going to pick up some near fall. I don't think he can pin him from there. And Frank wisely lets that go as he got in a tough position. So Frank will pick up three, 12 3, a minute three to go, third period. Now Frank going to try to come back through. Allison also going to try to get back through. Frank in control right now. And we are going to see a stalemate called. 49 seconds to go, third period. Frank, 12, Allison, three. Allison will be down. Frank's going to say, hey, I'm just going to let him go. So we're going to go neutral. 12-4 now is your score. 
Right away, Allison does a semi shot. Frank goes into that front headlock. And let's see if he's going to score from there. Going to try a little shuck by, nothing doing. Now Allison going to try to maybe look at a fireman or something there. 32 seconds to go. Frank trying to come around. Got to look out for that fireman. Now Frank does a nice job of grabs that heel and keeps coming around. Still no change of position. Both neutral. 17 seconds to go, third period. Frank up 12-4. Comes the Matt boy. So we're under 10. Allison trying to sneak out the back door. But it looks like he's not going to be able to get through. So Frank wins this one 12-4. Let's take a short break and then we'll come back and we'll see where Blackwell's going to be. And uh, we'll keep you updated on the Nighthawk wrestlers. Once again, you're listening to the classic on KDC 1490.
Welcome back to the Nighthawk Classic. So far, round three. <clears throat> Here's what we got. Riley Hasbrook had a bye at 113 pounds. Kyler Schleski was down in the little gym. He's kind of liking it down there. He won by Tech Fall 17 to one. Jaron Frank was just victorious by a score of 12 to four. Tanner Blackwell lost to Noel from Bowman County Beach, 15 to zero. Devin Graff was victorious by medical forfeit. So again, uh, whoever uh, Tanner, or excuse me, Devin was supposed to wrestle, uh, forfeited by medical forfeit. I did hear Tristan Picas is on deck on mat one or two, so we will be able to finally get to hear Tristan Picas uh, today. Nick Anderson again will be waiting on that. Bowden Hasbrook as well. Not sure if they're going to go into another round of girls uh, or if they will just wait. Uh, so once we get that updated again, we will let you know. Jennifer Verdon and Akalia Olson, once again, the two participants uh, for the Nighthawks in the girls division. So that's where we're at right now. Just kind of waiting on Tristan Picas. We're at 160 and 170 respectively uh, on the mats up here in uh, the big gym. So uh, when Tristan is up, we will bring you back and listen to Tristan Picas at 182 pounds. Welcome back to the Nighthawk Classic. Nick Anderson's going to be out on the mat before Tristan Picas. So Anderson going to take on Tafit from Lemon McIntosh. Nick going to shoot in on a double leg, and he's going to pick up two on the takedown. And let's see if he can throw Tafit towards his back. Connor Tafit from Lemon McIntosh down 2-0 to Nick Anderson. Now Anderson going to throw in a chicken wing, and he's got Tafit on his back. Nick settles in, and he picks up the fall. So Anderson picks up a fall in 42 seconds. So nice job by Anderson. Pin in 42 seconds at 195 pounds. Once again, Tristan Picas will be coming up. We'll see if uh, Bowden Hasbrook will be uh, anywhere near. Kind of looking around, so we'll uh, we'll wait on him. So let's listen to some more of our fine sponsors here on KNDC waiting for Tristan Picas at 182 pounds. 192. Excuse me. In the hole. 
Count Marshall, Jules, Sturgis. In the hole now, one, Blue Coat, Tiny Eagle Mute, Agurka, Sturgis. Tristan Picas, we've been saying a couple of rounds that he was going to be up. And as I say that, he comes out. He's going to be taking on Wyatt Alred from Moorcroft. And Alred right away going to come in. He's going to shoot. He's got Picas in trouble. He's got him hooked up in a cradle. So Alred picks up two on the takedown. And he's got a cradle hooked up on Tristan Picas right near the edge of the mat. This is a strong kid from Moorcroft. Does he just kind of push Picus right near the edge, threw in a cradle, and uh, Tristan usually breaks out of that fairly easy. And uh, not so easy today as Allerid hanging on to that inside cradle right near the edge, not picking up any near fall points. Now he's gonna try to break through as the hands with Picus. Minute 10 to go, Picus down 2-0. Now he's going to try to face him is Tristan, and he's going to try to come back through. And let's see, right near the edge of the mat, we're going to give him one. One on the escape. And that's a good call. As they go off the mat, two to one. Allered leads it over Picus, two to one. 50 seconds to go. Now Picus going to hit, oh, nice headlock. 
He catches Allred on the padlock, and he's going to try to tighten it up. And he's got Allred in trouble from Moorcroft. Pika settling in, and he's got 33 seconds to go. And there's the fall. So Pikas comes back through, and he hits a beautiful headlock. And he gets a fall in 1 minute and 29 seconds. So 129 pin for, for uh, Pikas. All right, so I'm looking around here, looking for Hasbrook. And uh, I don't see him anywhere up here. So I'm thinking maybe he will be down in the mat three or four. So I'll just send it back to the station for a couple of commercials. We'll see if we see Tristan. Uh, I did hear the uh, girls being announced. Verdin, she will be on uh, mat number one. So we are going to go into another round of girls. So we will have Verdin, and then we'll go with a Kaylee Olson. Uh, should be shortly after. Olson will be taking on Darla Barnes. So stay close to KNDC as we got more wrestling action coming up here from the heading classic. In the hole, Matt Four, Smith, Harding County, Aradnik, Bowman.
Welcome back to the Hedinger Classic as Jennifer Verdon going to be taking the mat and we're lucky because Akalia Olson will be right after her right in front of us on mat number one. So Verdon, she's going to be taking on Elayla Maynard from Cheyenne Eagle Butte and Jennifer Verdon and here we go. After these two matches, I will recap this round, and then we will be, uh, uh, they will have the, the rest of the girls round, and then we will uh, let you know what the plan is for the next couple of rounds, as we'll have a little bit of time uh, as they finish out the girls round, and then uh, go into round number four, I believe, uh, for the boys. Uh, the plan earlier was to do five rounds tonight, so we'll see uh, if they still plan on uh, going through with that as we go. So again, Verdon and Maynard. Maynard comes in from Eagle Butte. Maynard gonna shoot in on a double leg. Verdon pushing the head down. Good control. Oh, Verdon gonna try to go out a headlock. Maynard gonna roll through. Now Verdon comes back through. No position yet. Now, now Verdon has her hooked up in the headlock. And she's got Maynard in trouble. She's got a minute two to go. Jennifer Verdon with a nice headlock. And she's right near the middle of the mat, right next to the Nighthawk. Maynard trying to fight through. And Jennifer getting it nice and tight. She's gonna throw the hips through. Maynard trying to catch that leg. All she has to do is sit there and 31 more, or excuse me, 40 seconds. Maynard's gonna have to sit there. So a nice headlock by Verdon, and there it is. So Jennifer Verdon, in one minute and 30 seconds, will pick up a fall. So pin in 130 for Jennifer Verdon over Maynard from Eagle Butte. All right, we'll be right back. Oh, we'll still just keep it right here. Akali Olson now coming out. Akali Olson will be taking on Darla Barnes from Lemon McIntosh. So here we go. Akali Olson and Darla Barnes. Match number two. Worked out pretty good. Both of them right in front of me here. Verdon picks up a pin. Oh, Olsen going to go to a headlock as well. She's got Barnes on her back, so Akalia Olsen picks up the takedown. She's got the headlock hooked up, and now she's trying to sit through. <laughs> and akalia has got plenty of time. She's got a minute 35, and she's just sitting there right out in the middle of the mat. And a nice headlock also by Akalia. Her and Jennifer must work on those each day in practice. All she needs to do is sit right there, get heavy on the hips. Minute 15 still to go, first period. Akalia is still going to lead this one, too. She's going to pick up at least three, if not a pin. And underneath, Barnes trying to hook up on the legs. She's trying to hook up on the legs and then try to roll through, but Akalia getting a little bit more pressure with that arm, 55 seconds to go. So Akalia will pick up at least three, if not a pin. Credit Barnes, she's been on her back for over a minute 15 already. Now Akalia getting a little bit better position, lifting the head, throwing the hips out. Barnes, credit her, keeping that shoulder up. 30 seconds to go. Olsen still looking for a pin. Now she's looking up at the ceiling. Is Akalia? Barnes still trying to roll through. 18 seconds to go. Credit Barnes for fighting off this headlock. Akalia Olsen threw it right away in that first period. And it looks like Barnes is going to make it through. So Olsen's going to lead at 5-0. We're back in 30 with Akalia Olsen.
Olsen chooses down right away. She comes around on a switch, and she's going to throw Barnes towards her back again. Great move by Akele Olsen. Now she's going to throw in a half Nelson. And Akele, uh, and I don't, I don't know if Barnes has another two minutes in her to fight off of her back. So Akalia right now looking in great position as she's got Barnes on her back again. And uh, yeah, that looks tight from there. Minute 35 to go. But credit Darla Barnes for fighting. Unfortunately thrown on her back at, right at the beginning of the first period. Now she's thrown on her back at the beginning of the second period. But credit her for fighting off of her back. A minute 16 still to go. Olsen's going to lead at 7-0. She's going to pick up at least three. And now Barnes is going to throw that, throw that arm through. Man, nice job by Barnes to get off of her back. Now Olsen going to restart. She's going to throw in an inside cradle. So Akalia Olsen putting together headlocks and cradles. And now she's got Barnes in trouble one more time. 50 seconds to go. Akalia Olsen looking for a pin over Darla Barnes. And right now, she's just nonstop. And there it is. Akalia Olsen just pinning combination after pinning combination. But credit Darla Barnes. She made it almost 35 seconds left in that second period. But Olsen does pick up the pin. So Akalia will have another match in round three against Adali Simmons. So Simmons comes in from Kildare, and Verdin, let's see here, Verdin will come, uh, and she will have a match. It looks like she'll take on O'Leary from McLaughlin whenever they decide to do the next round uh, for the girls. So this round, round number three, quick recap. Once again, Olsen just picked up a pin. Verdin picked up a pin. Bowden Hasbrook, he had a bye. Nick Anderson, he got a pin in 42 seconds. Tristan Picas, he got a pin in a minute 29. Devin Greff won by medical forfeit. Tanner Blackwell was defeated by Noel from Bowman County Beach, 15 to zero. Jaron Frank was victorious, 12 to four. Kyler Schleski victorious by Tech Fall, 17 to one. And Riley Hasbrook picked up a bye in round three. So here's where we stand. Three rounds in the books for the guys. Two rounds just uh, just uh, starting here for the girls. We will find out if they're going to go right into round four uh, for the guys. Again, the plan was to do five today. So we'll uh, send it back to the station. Stay, uh, stay tuned to KNDC 1490 for ongoing Nighthawk Classic here on KNDC.
In the hole, Matt one, Cuffrell, Norcroft, Grove, Dawson County.
In the hole nat two, Northrop, Bowman, Wickstrom, Harding County.
In the hole, Matt Four. Elsher, Sturgis, Anderson, Moorcroft.
City, Wilner, Sturgis. In the hole, map one, Frank, Hedinger, Playo, Prada.
sheets are run off and available, boys and girls. The weigh-in sheets are available for both boys and girls. In the hole, Matt Three, Mills, Fearfix, Sheehan, Lorecroft. In the hole, Matt, two. Dennis, Watford City, Sperry, Coleman. In the hole, Matt, one. Schaefer, Broadus, Noel, Bowman. Welcome back to the Nighthawk Classic. Just a quick update as we uh, we were going to come back to Jaron Frank and uh, he went out and uh, he pinned uh, Playl from uh, Broadus, Colton Playl, before we could even get the outro done. So uh, Frank wins by fall over Flail from Broadus. Once again, this round coming up, we'll have Tanner Blackwell, Devin Greff, Tristan Picas, uh, Nick Anderson, and Bowden Hasbrook. So far, Riley Hasbrook won by forfeit, uh, medical forfeit, and Tyler Shalesky was victorious by injury default. So uh, again, medical forfeit, uh, they decided not even to try it out, so Riley won by medical forfeit. Kyler was in the middle of his match at 3.02 of the uh, match, and uh, the boy he was wrestling uh, got injured. So he won by injury default in 303. Jaron Frank just won by fall uh, in about one minute over Playl from Broadus. So once again, looking around, we're looking for uh, Tanner Blackwell, Devin Graff. The way I understand it, we're going to go right into another round. Uh, if that changes, I will let you know. But right now, we're in the middle of round four. We're at 145 pounds on one mat, 138 on the other. Um, so at about 6:15, I'm thinking they're going to try to either go or else. What I was told is maybe stop at seven. So we'll we'll keep you updated. Uh, once again, the Headinger Classic going well. No injuries. Some good matches. A lot of kids. 
and uh, that's what we like to see. So uh, if we are having uh, kids up in uh, mats one and two, we'll bring them to you. Uh, but if Blackwell, Graf, Picus, Anderson, or Hasbrook end up being in three and four, we'll just give you updates, which we have been doing uh, throughout the uh, entire day. So once again, that's the update from the Hedinger Classic. Frank wins by Finn in one minute over Playle from Broadus. Just got an update, uh, both Blackwell and Graf will be wrestling each other, will be on mat three down in the small gym. So again, we will not be able to bring that mat to you. So Blackwell and Graf coming up, this is one of those where we again have wrestlers in the same pool. They'll be going at each other here in round four down on mat three. So uh, we'll send it back to the station, listen to some more of the, uh, uh, the uh, Scott Shannon Show, along with some of your uh, uh, great sponsors here on KNDC. And we'll return to the Classic, getting ready for Picus, Anderson, and Hasbro.
In the hole on map three, Paxson, Miles City. Deckley or Deckel, Cheyenne Eagle Butte.
In the hole, Matt one, Pekas Hedinger, the young, Miles City. In the hole, Matt two, Jacobs, Sturgis, Patton, Harding County. In the hole,
Stuber, Bowman, Miller, Miles City. In the hole, Matt One, White Mountain, McLaughlin, Hasbrook, Hedinger. In the in the hole, 
Humes, Warcraft, Smith, Miles City. In the hole, Matt Three, Koenigsfield, Baker, Thurman, Sturgis. Good afternoon, actually good evening everybody and welcome back here to the Robert Frankie Auditorium as we get ready for Tristan Picas who is out on the mat right now at 182 pounds. We're in round four, going to go right into round five here. We're in round four, Tristan Picas taking on Brenton Padden of Harding County. And right now, both kids are just tying up center circle one minute into this uh, period. No score on the clock. We'll run down uh, results between periods here and between breaks. Picas has to readjust the headgear. He'll stop it at 58 seconds. Let's get Night Ox wrestling eight wrestlers here at the uh, varsity level. Uh, eight boys and two girls. Now a headlock, a throw by Picas. He caught him, and he's got some back points. He's got Padden in trouble just along the edge of the mat, and there it is. He threw the headlock and just cranked on it, and there's your fall, a minute 18 into the match for Tristan Picas. In the hole, Matt, two. Picking up the victory. In other matches in this round at 152, it was Devin Greff getting by Tanner Blackwell by pin in the third period. Uh, we had uh, Kyler Shalesky winning by injury default, and Riley Hasbrook won by forfeit. Waiting on Nick Anderson at 195. We'll see if we uh, what match we have coming up here. Uh, looks like Anderson in round four here will not be wrestling. Looks like he has a bye here in this round. And at 220, Bowden Hasbrook out on the mat right now at 220 pounds. Hasbrook in round four here. Uh, if I can find him, there you go, taking on Quentin White Mounta of McLaughlin. Right away gets a quick takedown, working on that near side arm, trying to pull it back and running around the world here, but uh, White Mount feels that coming on, gets back to his base, 2-0 to score. Once again, we're on HPS stream team. And as Bowden Hasbrook on mat number one, if you're watching it on uh, stream team, he's up in the upper left corner. We are going to go into round five, and we're going to wrestle until 8 o'clock. So another hour and 10 minutes of wrestling here, whether we get through round five or partially through. All right, grab that arm. Bowden going to push that head through. Going to try to take him to his back, and he does. Nice job by Bowden Hasbrook. White Mountain trying to fight to his base, but Bowden has it tight. He's got the front headlock hooked up, and there's your fall. Bowden Hasbrook, a minute 27 into the, the uh, match will win by pin. Once again, minute 37 on the fall for Bowden Hasbrook. 
So that pushes us all the way back to 106 pounds on both mats right now. And we do have mats uh, or uh, matches going on, on uh, down in the little gym. And we're trying to figure out who is wearing all that good stuff. Let's run down results here. Through four rounds at 113, Riley Hasbrook is sitting at 4-0. Or 3-0, excuse me. One by fall, one by fall, received a bye, and then one by forfeit at 120. Kyler Shaleski, he wins by injury default, one by tech fall, one by tech fall, and one by fall, so he is 4-0. He'll be into the semifinals. And 145, Jaron Frank picked up a major, one by fall, one by another major, and then one by fall. So he is 4-0 on the, on the uh, tournament. 152-pound weight class. Devin Graff lost his first match by major, lost to Emery Knoll, 6-3, one by forfeit and then one by fall over Tanner Blackwell. So Greff now two and two on the uh, tournament. Tanner Blackwell lost by fall, lost by decision, 14-8. Lost by tech fall to Emery Knoll and lost by fall to Devin Greff. So he is 0-4 on the tournament. 182, Tristan Picas. We just mentioned uh, one by uh, fall. He won his first one also, so he is 2-0 going into round five. Nick Anderson, one by fall, received a bye, one by fall, and received a bye, so he is 2-0. He'll wrestle in round five, I believe. Bowden Hasbrook, he comes in one by fall, minute 17, received two byes, and then now just win by fall, so he goes to 2-0 in the bracket. So we're up to 113 we're waiting on. We'll quickly run down the Lemon McIntosh Cowboys. Max Anderson, he received a bye, then one by, lost by fall to Riley Hasbrook, one by decision, and then lost by a pin. At 120, Gage Anderson has won all four of his matches by falls, so he is 4-0. At 126, Cash Sheely, he is 0-4, losing by fall twice, lost by tech fall, lost by decision. At 170, Emmett Mahar, he is, looks to be 2-2 two two in the tournament. He'll receive a round five bye. 195, Connor Tibet uh, got a bye. One by, lost by fall to Birch Bang. Lost by fall to Nick Anderson. And lost by fall to Tucker Turbeville. Connor Tibet will have a round five bye. He will be 0-3. At 285, Liam McCartney's uh, received a bye. Then lost by fall. Lost by fall and lost by fall. So he is 0-3. And that is for the varsity side for Lemon. So that's kind of what we have, the results for the Nighthawks and the Lemon Cowboys. On the girls' side of things, we'll quickly run down the... Things there for the team scores. Nighthawks in sixth place with six points. Lemon in fourth place with 10 points. Baker leading the way with 27. Looking at the team results for the girls. We start off with Hedinger Stranton. Jennifer Verdon, one by fall and one by fall. So she is 2-0. Oh. Akalia Olson also one by fall. She is 1-0. For Lemon, Darla Barnes. She lost by decision and lost by fall. She is 0-2. Quinn Butler won by fall and won by a major decision. She is 2-0. And, and Dina Byers has won by fall. 
So she is 1-0 in the girls' side of things. Uh, looks like Bowman does not have any. They do have a couple girls from Beach. Micaiah McFarland, she won by fall and lost by fall. And then Micaiah Hartlieb is, uh, let's see here, lost by fall and lost by forfeit. So it looks like Hartley forfeited round two. So that's what we have for the girls' side of things for the varsity. Right now we have out here Riley Hasbrook coming out at 113 pounds. We're in the first period. This will be round five here. We're one minute in, so I was giving you all the information, and Riley's already out there. So we're in uh, round five. Liam Albrecht, Albrecht of Kildeer. Albrecht and Hasbrook tying up center circle. Nice little uh, shot by Albrecht, but uh, Hasbrook felt that one, backed out of that one. Score remains 0 0, 30 seconds to go, first period. Riley tried to go down on that left ankle of Albrecht's, but Albrecht took a shot as well. They both back out, both tie up center circle once again. Nice little duck under by Hasbrook. Gets the one, gets two. Takes a double leg down. He'll get, nope, they're not going to give him the points yet. Now he gets the two. And now he gets off to the side, and Riley's got to be careful. He's getting way off to the side here. Albrecht in a little bit better position here. Now Hasbrook could be in trouble here as time will run out, and they're gonna give him one on the escape. So Riley just uh, kind of fell asleep there at the end of the uh, match and gave up the one. So with that, we go back center circle. Albrecht will go down. Hasbrook on top here with the start of the second period, 2-1. Riley Hasbrook at 113 pounds. Riley, as we said, 3-0 uh, on the tournament with two pins and winning by forfeit. Has that trying to work a chicken wing series here. He's going to jump back over Albrecht. Down to minute 37. Getting off too close to the edge of the mat here, so Albrecht's just going to roll off here and they'll go back center circle. A lot of wrestlers taught to get to that edge of the circle just in case you get in trouble, you can roll off and restart. That's kind of what happened there. Back center circle they go right away. Riley gonna work on the chicken wing, brings the arm back. Now he's working on a double chicken wing here. But Albrecht feels that, but now Riley gonna run the chicken wing to the left side. He's gonna step over. Oh, almost had him to his back. They're gonna give him two back points. And that'll make it four to one. So he had him there long enough to get some back points. Sturgis Brown leading the way with 156 points, followed up by Miles City, Moorcroft, Kildeer, and Spearfish. Hedinger Scranton coming in sixth at 76 points. Bowman County Beach with 75. Lemon in 12th place was 12th place with 26. Once again, we go off the edge of the mat once again as Riley was just getting ready to get him to his back. But Albrecht in the right place at the right time to just roll off the edge of the mat. Head back center circle and right away Hasbrook on top with a minute to go, up four to one. Here at the 113 pounds. Albrecht not doing a lot on the bottom, so he's got to be careful he doesn't get dinged for stalling here. And he's, referee looks like he's telling him something. And now he gets to his base, but right away Hasbrook, nope, now he's going to stand, almost face him. Hasbrook going to chase him around. He's got to take him back to the mat, or he's going to get one. He will give up the one. And now it's 4-2 to two with 30 seconds to go here in the period. Second period action from the Nighthawk Classic, round five. Hasbrook and Albrecht down to 20 seconds. Now nobody wants to do anything crazy here at the end of the period as we get ready to head to the third. Somebody's going to try to score here. Riley's got the front headlock hooked up, trying to grab that back ankle. Looking for a, nope. He's got the leg down to three seconds, and he's not going to do it. Not enough time to get points. 4-2 Hasbrook. We're back in 30.
welcome back. Third period action. Hasbrook on top once again to start this third period here. Not sure if Albrook took down. Now he's going to do a reversal and gets a reversal. Yeah, he just came around from behind and picks up the reversal and now has just tied things up here at 4-4. Now Hasbrook is going to have to work underneath and he does a little roll, but Albrook could feel it. Goes right through. Riley's trying to stand up here to try to get a point here, but not in a very good position is Hasbrook. But Albrecht getting a little bit high now. They're both sitting down on their butts. Albrecht trying to roll up left side. Hasbrook, no control either wrestler. Down to 56 seconds to go. And right away, Albrecht gonna work that, try to work the half here. He's going to try to get up to the side here. He's going to grab the head. If he can pull him over, he could get some points here, and he will. Keep coming, Riley. Down to 36 seconds. Oh, he's going to be pinned. Riley's going to get him to his back. Nice reversal for Hasbrook. And there's your fall. Riley Hasbrook picking up the pin here with 25 seconds to go in the period. 535 on the pin for Riley Hasbrook. We'll push us now to a 120 pound weight class. What a match we just saw there by those lightweights at 113 pounds. So Hasbrook picks up the win. Now we're gonna wait on Kyler Shaleski. Gonna take a look at Bowman County. The Bowman Beach Bucket Dogs, 106 pounds. Cutter Rondike right now sitting four and one with three pins, a tech fall, and was defeated by pin by Jake or uh, Jack Bomback at 113 pounds. Isaiah Dobb. sitting at one and four on the season, or on the uh, tournament. 132, Cade Northrup. Northrup sitting at 0 oh and four. 132, Caleb Sarsland. He's at three and one. Sawyer Knoll. He's sitting at two and two. 145, Colby Sperry sitting at three and one. Emery Knoll at 152. He's sitting at 5 0. As Knoll wins by medical forfeit, so Knoll will be 5 0. He'll be into the semifinals tomorrow. 160, Carter Sarslin. Sarslin sitting at 2 and 2. 170, Blake Wolbaum. Wolbaum sitting at 1 and 3. At 220, May Stuber sitting at 4 0. And those are your varsity wrestlers for Bowman Beach Bucca Dogs. Once again, the teams that are here, Baker, Bowman Beach, Broadus, Cheyenne, Eagle Butte, Dupree, Dawson County, Faith, Harding County, Hedinger, Scranton, Kildeer, Lemon, uh, Lemon McIntosh, I should say, McLaughlin, Miles City, Moorcroft, Newtown Partial, Spearfish, Standing Rock, Sturgis Brown, and Watford City. Once again, Riley Hasbrook, as we said, he's going to go into the semifinals tomorrow. Kyler Shaleski has a match coming up here. He wins. He'll be into the semifinals. And then we'll have a little bit of a wait at 145 for Jaron Frank. So let's take another break here from our sports sponsors here on KNDC Hedinger. Be back in just a bit.
Welcome back here to the Night Out Classic. Once again, we're going to wrestle till 8 o'clock, whether we get through round five or not. So they're trying to move as quickly through as possible. We are, we just mentioned uh, Riley, Riley Hasbrook won by pin. We're going to check in. Uh, let's see here. As down in the other room, we haven't got uh, verification on who's down there yet, but we're waiting for Kyler Cholesky at 120 pounds here. And I think he might have been down in the other room here. We do apologize. Let's see if he even had a match here at 120. Kyler Cholesky would have had John Jeffrey of Spearfish. So we'll check on that real quickly, make sure that we uh, we must have missed him because he might have been down in that uh, small gym. Once again, they're working two mats down there, so that is uh, speeding this turn tournament up considerably. And John Jeffrey wins by pin a minute 44 over Kyler. So Kyler will lose here in round five, a minute 44 pin. So next up will be Jaron Frank. Frank will be coming up here 145 pounds. Once again, we're gonna be wrestling till eight o'clock here this evening. Uh, Jaron will have Aiden Crocs of Spearfish. And we're just going to have to be listening for his uh, room to be called as they're down in at 126. Down in the other room as well. We're up at 132 up here. So next group up is 145 pounds. Oh, actually 138 and then 145. So we'll take a break, we'll send it back for some music. And when we come back, we'll have more action. We'll take you up to the eight o'clock hour. So stick around, we wanna thank all of our sports sponsors bringing you Nighthawk Classic action here on KNDC Heading, or as you've heard them today, make sure you uh, stop in, tell them thank you for sponsoring Nighthawk Athletics. Without them, it would not be possible. We're going to get kind of a guesstimate for tomorrow on when the championship game will be. It's going to be iffy on whether we'll have the girls varsity game at 3.30 against Trenton. We may or may not have that depending on the championship matches in the afternoon. So make sure you stick close. We'll keep you up to date as much as we can. Going to send it back to the studios real quickly. Once again, 145 pound Jaron Frank. He'll be coming up here in a little bit, so stick close to KNDC 1490 AM, 106.7 FM, and of course, Stream Team. Thanks, and we'll turn it back to the studios and be back in just a bit.
Welcome back here to the Nighthawk Classic, and uh, right away, Aiden Proct of Spearfish will get a quick takedown on Jaron Frank here in round number five. This is the final round here tonight. We're going to end it at 8 o'clock, whether we get all the way through 285, but I have a feeling they're going to finish, finish it here with the heavyweights. It's going to be close, but I think they will probably finish round five tonight, so that'll push the championship matches and everything up uh, quite a bit earlier. We'll look at semifinals right away in the morning. 2-0 the score. Cracked of Spearfish leading it here with a minute to go. Frank back center circle. He's down. Crack going to, uh, Frank going to try a quick roll. Going to grab that leg. Turns around, grabs a head. And uh, still looking for that grab. But Crack uh, just pushing that arm away. Frank has a hold of that right leg. As Crack is not in a very good position right now. Frank is in an excellent position to pick up reversal points here. And maybe even some near fall. Nope, they're going to slip off, and now he will get the two. So 2-2 two, two our score, 25 seconds to go here in the first period. And Frank going to start working here from the top. A hard cross face going to bring him to his back. You're going to get some back points here. Going to still hold on to that left arm. Look for the chicken wings here. He's going to give up two near fall. Now he's going to step over. He's going to slip off. Going to have to go back and try to now Spreck going to roll through. And nice job by Frank to just keep rolling through with two seconds to go. End of the first. 4-2 Frank back in 30. Welcome back here at 145 pounds. Jaron Frank down, trailing at four to two, or leading at four to two, excuse me. Spreck will take top, or Frank will choose down, excuse me. Aiden Cracked of Hill Spearfish, South Dakota. Has the left arm, gonna be careful. The ref's watching that. Can't get too high, you're up potentially dangerous. And now, oh, the Kid getting up, very frustrated with the official, but he cranked that arm on Jaron Frank, and 
And now we're going to get a... He might get a warning here. He's Now he's walking around behind Frank here. You just got to get to the mat and let's go. Just like any sport, you need that short memory. Spreck going to go back. Frank going to try to grab that leg, and now he throws the left leg and try to get both legs in it. Frank does a nice job trying to peel that left ankle out, but can't do it. So Spreck remains on top, trying to grab that left arm again. And now, once again, Spreck has to be careful with the arm. Frank has a hold of Spreck's left ankle. Now let's go, but down to a minute five to go four to Frank. Spreck going to try to grab that arm once again here, but Frank just going to roll with it here and try just trying to stay out of trouble here. Spreck now has the leg. Now Frank going to get in a little bit better position here. As now Frank could end up pinning Spreck here. He's got a, he's, he's looking like he's pinned here. Coach Berwick says you got to turn around official and there's the reversal and they're going to give back points still on top going to give him three more here but right now he's going to squeeze it tight here we go Sprecht in trouble there's your no not yet that's very there it is not yet 15 seconds to go wow he's flat there it is there's your fall As Jaron Frank will pick up the fall with 12 seconds to go and Spreck not being very sportsmanlike. Oh, wrong hand, there you go. A very frustrated wrestler in Sprecht. Frank will win it by pin in the third period. A big win for Jaron, that'll be push him now to 5-0 and, oh, and will be in the semifinals tomorrow. Next up, we'll have it at 152 pounds. As we're going to have a couple matches, I believe. Devin Greff will have Tegan Tevet of Miles City. Tanner Blackwell will have Regan Schaefer of Broadus. We'll keep an eye on maps three and four. In the it's kind of tough. Uh, there's a glare on the mat, so it's kind of tough to see the wrestlers down there. But they are right now on mats three and four down in the little gym. Once again, waiting on Devin Greff and Tanner Blackwell matches coming up. And then we'll have a little bit of a, a wait as we get back up to 182 pounds. Tristan Picas will have Reese Jacobs of Sturgis Brown. Nick Anderson will have Birch Bang of Kildeer. And at 2.20, uh, looks like Bowden Hasbrook will have Mace Stuber of Bowman Beach. That one should be a dandy of a match, featuring your top two wrestlers at 220 pounds in Region 4. All right, let's take a break. We're going to wait on uh, Greff and Blackwell matches. They're coming up here in just a little bit, so stick close to KNDC 1490 AM, 106.7 FM. We'll take a break, be back in just a bit.
welcome back. Here we jump out at 152 pounds. Devin Graff comes in. We'll take on Deegan Tvet. And we'll keep an eye down on the other mat. Let's see here. In the small gym for Tanner Blackwell's match. I don't see him out here warming up, but we'll uh, let you know in a little bit. So here we go. Tvet and Graff. Big match here for Devin. Try to get into the uh, consolation semis. As we said, Devin uh, right now sitting at two and two and go to three and two and possibly get into the Constellation semis. And right away, Tivet going to try to take down. They go off the edge of the mat. Colby Sperry trailing at nine to one to Curry Brown of Miles City. That's going down, on down in the uh, little gym. Tivet and Graf. Minute 20 to go here in the first period. Not a lot of action. They got off the edge of the mat earlier. Now they're just kind of dancing around in the white circle, the inner circle. Nice little duck under. Greff trying to catch him. Instead, Tibet going to take Greff to his back here, going to get some back points. Greff just made a mistake there, and uh, now he's going to get to his base here. Has to get that left arm back, though. Does Greff, and he does. Well, nope, Devin does, still has the, uh, Tibet still has the chicken wing hooked up here with 49 seconds to go here in the period. First period action, Greff trailing into 5-0 after giving up the three-point near fall. And Tibet in control with 30 seconds to go, just kind of flattening out Greff. Greff getting to his base. But right away, Tibet going to put those legs in. And Greff can't do much from that position. Now he's trying to sneak out the back here. But once again, Tibet must be a very good leg rider because he threw those legs in quickly and right away puts Greff's head right into the mat. Down to 10 seconds. Dangerous spot here for Greff's arm. Trying to fight off the back points here with two seconds. One second, and that'll do it for the... First period, 5-0. Tavet leading it here in the first period. Curry Brown leading it over Colby Sperry, 13-3. That is in the third period. And once again, we'll be watching for Tanner Blackwell. Not sure if he is down there or if he is up here. See Tristan Picas warming up. He'll be coming up here momentarily. Nick Anderson and Bowden Hasbrook also will have matches as well. So again, we're going until 8 o'clock tonight. We'll be back, back here tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. with the semifinals. And right away, Devin Greff trying to sit up, and he's going to fall right on the chest of Tavet. And now trying to face him. Tavet going to have to give it up here. Greff going to get two. But I think when Greff fell on top of his chest, kind of took the air out of him. And now Tavet fighting for his life on the edge of the mat here. Turning away from Greff is what he wants to do. But Greff trying to muscle him a little bit here, but trailing it here 5-2. A lot of time on the clock. Minute 20. Second period. Greff has the far side arm hooked up. Now he's going to grab the leg. Trying to get an inside cradle. He's going to work a pinning combination here. He's going to get some back points and maybe the pin. He's bridging hard. He's going to have the back points. He'll tie things up here. And coach is telling him to grab the... Watch those hands together. Down to 52 seconds. That's a long time to fight off your back here. Graf, chest on chest. Oh, that's tight. Get over there, ref. There you go. Still no call yet. Now he pulls him back on the mat. Devin picks him up, puts him back down. It's close. He's got to get the arm out of the way, Devin. Get your right arm out of the way. You could have a pin here in the second period. Long time to be fighting off your back is Tavet. Now he grabs the far side arm, going to pin that wrist. 15 seconds. Tavet still fighting off the pin. Looks close. Oh, man, there it is. Devin Graff picking up the pin with nine seconds to go. 
in the second period. So 351 pin for Devin Greff. And that should put him into the consolation semis unofficially. Great job by Greff. And we're waiting on Tanner Blackwell, who will be wrestling Regan Schaefer of Broadus. We'll see if these guys, they're not around here yet. Put them down on the other uh, mat here, it looks like. So we're looking around for them. We'll take a break. And when we come back, We'll let you know if Tanner Blackwell is coming up next. So stick close here for more of our sports sponsors and be back here on KNDC Hedinger in just a bit. Welcome back here. Looks like Tanner Blackwell is on mat number three here. So we're going to shift over to stream team as he is on mat number three. We're going to be on your left corner of your TV screen or your computer screen, wherever you're at. No score on that one. Regan Schaefer is from Broadus. He's in the green. Going to shoot in on Blackwell. And Blackwell's going to have to uh, fight here to stay, and it looks like he's going to give up the two. So 2-0. Two Schaefer leads it here. And now Blackwell has to get to his base here. He's trying to grab the head here. Now he does. Wisely gets to his base here. 2-0 the score. As we're, we don't have the official time. They have it on track wrestling, but that is behind. It shows a minute four, but they just put the points up as right now, Regan Schaefer in control here with Blackwell working the chicken wing here, and he's gonna put Blackwell to his back. Possibly give up some back points here, and yes, he will. Blackwell will be giving up some back points. Going to be 5-0 here as he lets Blackwell gets back to his base here. 5-0 the score. So again, next up, uh, we'll have Tristan Picas. He's wandering around over here on the uh, side by the stage here, so he may be up here momentarily. But we'll be taking a break here in a little bit. We're at 152 pounds. Blackwell going to stand up but can't get away from Schaefer who leads it here 5-0, and that's how the first period is going to end. Blackwell trails it 5-0 to Schaefer back in 30. Welcome back here. Both will choose up. They'll be in neutral position. 5-0 the score, but we'll right away, Schaefer going to shoot in on the takedown, and we'll lead it here now 7-0 over Tanner Blackwell. Second period action down in the small gym, mat number three. Once again, if you're tuned in to stream team, you are seeing four matches going on right now. The top two matches are up in the big gym. The two bottom ones are in the small gym. And now Blackwell in trouble. He's on his back. Going to give up more back points. He right now trails it here 7-0. Blackwell will get back to his base, but will give up three more. So it'll be now 10-0. Regan Schaefer. Schaefer leads it 10-0. Blackwell 0-4 on the tournament. Will not be wrestling tomorrow. Will not make the consolation semis. And Blackwell once again. Schaefer going to run that head again. And now puts some more pressure on that neck. And he could have a possible pin here. Under a minute to go in this one. 
Blackwell going to try to get back to his base. Can't do it. Schaefer going to squeeze a little bit tighter here. Now going to give up that arm. Blackwell almost getting back to his base here, but uh, Schaefer still just holding on to that left arm. Will get the three, but hasn't let go of the hold yet here, so he may still have a chance to pin Blackwell. And time running down here in the second period, so it's now 13-0. Blackwell trying a quick sit out here as we near the end of the second period. Looks like that's how it's going to end the second period. 13-0. Schaefer leads it over Tanner Blackwell. Going into the third period. As Blackwell. Looks like Schaefer's going to choose down here to start this third period. Leading it by 13. Right away, Schaefer going to sit out, going to roll through. He's going to get the reversal, and that should end it here. Should make it 15-0 here. That should be 15-0, and that's it. So Tanner Blackwell will lose 15-0 to Schaefer from Broadus. All right, as we said, coming up in a bit, we'll have... Tristan Picus at 182 pounds. We're going to take a break. All right, we're going to have an update on the scheduling. We're going to finish this round tonight. All right, the girls' division will go tomorrow morning. will be postponed for tonight. They're going to go to tomorrow morning. So we're going to go through to heavyweight tonight. So it'll be a little bit after 8 o'clock when we get out of here. But we have three more matches. Tristan Picus, Nick Anderson, and Bowden Hasbrook will all come back to wrestle when we come back on KNDC. Stick around. We'll be back in about 10, 15 minutes with more wrestling action.
right, welcome back. Here we jump up to 182 pounds. As we mentioned, Tristan Pikas in his final match in round five. He'll be taking on Reese Jacobs of Sturgis Brown. So Jacobs and Pikas, no score. 20 seconds in. Pikas going to get behind, going to take down here. Kind of an easy takedown for Pikas. And 182 pounds. Pikas trying to run the half here. Trying to work that far. And there he goes. Gets a half hooked up. He's going to roll it. And it looks like he could have some back points here. And looking for a quick pin. Going to get back points here. Minute eight to go. And there's your fall. Minute five, so 55 seconds into the match. Tristan Pikas will pick up the win at 182 pounds. We'll move on to 195. And that will be Nick Anderson and Birch Bang of Kildare. So a region matchup here. So Bang and Anderson. Both checking in center circle here. And then we'll have Bowden Hasbrook wrapping up the evening. And then that will end the wrestling for the night. We'll come back tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. Tune in about 8.45. We'll have Coach's Corner with head coach Jeremy Fordall. So we'll have that tomorrow morning, 8.45, with about a 15-minute interview. And then we'll have wrestling action coming your way right around 9 o'clock. So here we go, Anderson and Bang, wrapping it up center circle. Anderson looking at a shot, but now backs back out. There is a nice double leg. Got to finish it though, now he goes back to the single. Anderson trying to finish here, but Bang doing a nice job just sprawling out. 30 seconds into this match. And now Anderson still holding. Now he grabs a double. Nope. Bang going to fight that up. Now he's going to have to back his way out here and regroup. As we're down to a minute 10. Bang. Holding on. Now he's going to get in on a single on Anderson. But Anderson backs out just in time. And now Anderson going to grab that front headlock. And he's going to crank on it here with 55 seconds to go. As they're both towards the edge of the mat here. And now he's got a nice little shuck by by Anderson. We'll get the two. Nice job as Bang came back on. He shucked him by, got the two. 2-0 the score. 35 seconds to go here in the first period. Now Anderson has the chicken wing hooked up. He's going to try to pull Bang back, get some back points here. As we're at 195 pounds, 20 seconds to go here in the period. He's got the arm hooked up. He's going to get close to some back points here. And now he turns right into him, and now he's going to get back points. Bang turned right into the pin here, possibly. Down to five seconds. Looks like he's going to run out of time. And that's going to end your period. First period, 5-0. Anderson back in 30. back center. All right, welcome back here, back center circle here. Looks like Anderson is on top here to start this second period, 5-0. Anderson leads it. And right away, Anderson gonna get off to the side here. Worked on a half for a second, but then pulled it back. Uh, Bang felt that coming real quickly. Down to minute 30. Anderson rolling that left wrist underneath. Just trying to stay busy here. As he got bang some back points, holding on to that chicken wing. Now he's looking to run the arm here. Anderson gonna try to run it. 
Try to get some more back points here. Is Bang going to get close to stalling here? Nothing going on here for Bang. So Anderson just has to stay busy. Could get a stall point out of this, or a stall out of it anyways. As now Bang going to fix his headgear here in the process. He trails it now. There's your stall. Now they're going to get a stall on Anderson. So a stall, but no point. We'll go back center circle. Anderson. Gonna back back around the bang. Down to 30 seconds. 5-0 the score. Still no sign of Bowden Hasbrook. I think he's actually down in the other mat here. We'll keep track of him real quickly. As Anderson leads it here 5-0 with 15 seconds to go. Looks like Hasbrook is down in the other room. Now Anderson trying to chin drop here, trying to get some back points. Now he's going to work. Oh, he's going to run out of time again. Almost picking up back points was Anderson. They're going to give him two, so it's 7-0 the score. And it looks like Hasbrook is on mat number four over here at 220 pounds. And we'll try to get you a score, get you an update on it, but this will be the last match. This is Anderson Hasbrook and Mace Duber of Bowman County. They get through the first period already. As Duber defers, Hasbrook will I think he's going to go down to start this second period. Anderson still leading it here, 7-0. No score in the Hasbrook-Stuber match. It's right away, Bang going to come up real aggressive on the head. He has to, uh, he has to do something here. He's trailing it here, 7-0. Still no score in the Hasbrook-Stuber match. They both go off the edge of the mat. They'll go back center circle. Right now, Bang in a little bit of trouble here. Anderson shot in, got the single, pulling that leg up real tight to the chest. Bang is going to be in trouble here. If, if he can pull his head out, Anderson will get two more and lead it here 9-0. Looked like blood time on the Hasbrook match. And now Anderson lets him go. Well, remains, there was a stalemate, excuse me, 7-0 the score. Anderson now going to tie up, now backs back out. Bang Chul still trying to get aggressive here. With 34 seconds to go here in the period. Hasbrook now getting taken, uh, taking care of his blood. Still in a 0-0 match. Bang going to shoot in, but they're going to run out of real estate over on that far sideline with 21 seconds to go, so Bang has to do a throw and pin here. So Nanderson just has to be careful. Right away, Anderson dropped down on that leg here and he could get another two here. He will, and that'll make it 9-0. So Anderson is gonna win this one. He leads it here 9-0. We're gonna get a stall point on Bang, or stall anyways on Bang. More blood on the Hasbrook match. Not sure on the time there. Down to nine seconds as looks like Anderson gonna win it here down to three seconds. And Nick Anderson will pick up a big win for himself. He'll go to three and oh, and will be in the semifinals, I believe, tomorrow. We'll have all these updated tomorrow morning, right at nine o'clock for you. And maybe even tonight on Facebook. We'll see how adventurous I get. So Anderson will win that match. Bowden Hasbrook right now on the uh, in the small gym here, trailing or uh, no score right now, 0-0 the score. As Stuber goes back center circle, he's on top with Hasbrook on the bottom. Yeah. 
They don't have the time quite yet up on the scoreboard. I believe it's under a minute to go in the, in the second period. Stuber trying to hard cross face on Hasbrook once again. And Stuber just flattens him out here. Top two kids at a 220 pounds. And once again, more blood from Hasbrook. So we'll take a blood timeout, be back in 30. Welcome back here as I'm broadcasting Matt Four. That goes black. So we apologize. As of right now, no video on Matt number four, Bowden Hasbrook. Not sure what happened to the stream team, Matt number four. So we'll go back to track wrestling. They're in period two. No score on that one, but as we said, we've lost connection down in mat number four. So unable to see what's going on in mat number four. Bowden Hasbrook gets the escape at the end of the period here. He leads it now one to zero with about 30 seconds to go. Hey. As they head to the, looks like the third period's gonna get underway here. We've got the stream team where oh, I could see him in the background of Matt three here. Here we go. Oh, now Hasbrook gonna slip off, but Stuber has him to his back here. Hasbrook just slipped off and now he gets back to his base. And we'll see when they sort this thing out. They're in period three. And the official calling, I can't see what the official's calling. We're on the far end camera here. As they both go, it looks like that was the end of the period here. Trying to figure it out, you're still 1-0. It shows on the track rest, no, 4-1 Stuber. He's gonna get the four points. So he leads it 4-1, start of the third period. And there's more blood, no, Hasbrook stood up, and now they're gonna restart here. here. He'll lead now six to one. At 220 pounds during period three. Once again, we don't have a clock to look at. We do apologize, but Stuber leads it here six to one in the period. And we still haven't put the two up. Now seven to one, they call it. So seven won the score. Halfway through this second period. There we go. We got we got camera back, a little fuzzy, but we got it back. 7-1, Stuber leads it over Bowden Hasbrook. Third period action. We don't have the time, but we know we're late in the third period, nearing the one-minute mark. And at the conclusion of this one, we'll wrap it up. Tune in to Facebook later on. And then tomorrow morning, 845, we'll have Coach Jeremy Fordall. And then at 9 o'clock, we'll get in the wrestling. And another blood time for this one. So we'll take another 30-second break, our final 30-second break of the night, and be back.
tonight 6-1 our score they've corrected the track wrestling time winding down here for Bowden Hasbrook Stuber in control here on top leading it 6 to 1 as we're nearing the final 20 seconds of this one as Hasbrook as we mentioned uh, sitting at 2 and 0 oh, he's going to drop to 2 and 1 in the pool play Stuber undefeated but Bowden I believe at 220 I believe will go into the semifinals tomorrow. And that's how it ends. 6-1. Bowden Hasbrook will lose that match. And that wraps up our coverage today. Quickly running down the team scores. And then we will have the results posted later on and tomorrow morning. Nidox sitting in fourth at 130 points. Moorcroft 165, Mile City 169, Sturgis leading at 242. Killer in the five spot at 121 and a half. Bowman Beach in eighth at 93. Lemon in 12th with 35 points. That is your wrestling for the Night Hawk Classic today. We'll take a break, send it back to the studios, listen to some more of your favorites. And Scott Shannon, absolutely 80 is gonna be going on. We'll be back tomorrow morning. For more wrestling action here on KDC 1490 AM, 106.7 FM, and Stream Team, we'll send it back to the KDC studios on this Friday night. Dun, 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 dun. Justice. This is looking good. Yep.